We're joined by former Georgia congressman and host of the Doug Collins podcast. Congressman Doug Collins, good morning, Doug. How are you? Good morning. House Fair as well on Saturday. All right. Good to see you again. All right. Your reaction to David Weiss being named special, special counsel in Hunter Biden's probe. I mean, is this the fix? Uh, is the fix in, Congressman? What's going on? No, this is putting a, a bad coat of paint on a really bad coat of paint. I mean, nothing's changed here, really. I mean, if you think about it, this is the same person, you know, who signed off on the, the sweetheart deal with Hunter Biden to start with. It's the same person who's been slogging through this case for, you know, a year and a half, two years now with no progress made. And, and really, I mean, the, the special counsel provision actually, you know, it states that it should be outside the government and coming in. For a fresh look. That's the whole key to a special counsel is a fresh look. David Weiss couldn't give this a fresh look even if he went to sleep for three days and got up because he's been involved in it and been up to his eyeballs in the problems with this case from day one. Congressman, even Jake Tapper from CNN yeah. says that there's questions <laughs> that need to be raised around the decision and it may lend merit to the whistleblower uh, claims. Before I get rea your reaction, let's take a listen to that. I do think it's fair to question why would U.S. Attorney Weiss be appointed the special counsel. Usually a special counsel comes as an outside right. attorney. Now, it has happened before Durham came from inside, uh, and the attorney general has the, the right to do that, but it is odd. Second of all, this was a, this plea deal was picked apart by the judge, so one could ask why would you stick with you, the U.S. attorney um, if he, if, you know, if this was a failure, a colossal failure. This move makes it seem as though, well, maybe the whistleblowers were right. Maybe what they were alleging is true, and he didn't have the ability to charge wherever he wanted to charge, and now he does. So I, I do have a lot of questions about that, and I do think some of the political uh, questions being raised by Republicans uh, have merit. So there we have it. Even Jake Tapper has questions about this. What is your reaction? Well, to, to Jake Tapper actually having questions, well, that's a whole story unto itself. But, you know, the I think the real thing, let me correct, let's correct Jake Tapper's uh, uh, dialogue there. Uh, could the whistleblowers be right? In other words, I think they're lying, but maybe there's something truthful to what they're saying. That's what Jake Tapper's saying about the whistleblowers. And I think th this continues as you look further into this case. My concern about this case is that this is not about the actual Hunter Biden case. I think they're looking to maybe actually transfer this over to another jurisdiction. You may see another plea deal possibly sooner than not. Now, you may actually get fair charged out. There's that foreign agent uh, issue. You may actually get somebody actually, he might decide now that I've been made so, to look so bad in the press and everywhere else that I don't know how to do my job, that maybe he'll actually do his job now. But I have a, just a strong suspicion this was more about two things. Number one, it looks so bad the way that the optics of the Biden family, the Trump family, and these investigations over the past few years are being handled right now in the public eye, in courts and everything else. Everything focused on Trump Trump, everything with Joe Biden pushed to the side. Number two, Comer's investigative committee has started getting very, very close. I mean, they're, they've, they've, and here's the sad part. They've used investigative tools that have been at the FBI's disposal for five plus years about these suspicious activity reports on the transfer of money, which they never did anything with. Comer has brought this out, and the next step was the Biden family. By doing this now, they, I believe, and this is cynical of me, but I just believe it to be true, now David Weiss next month can come to Congress and say, I can't talk about that. It's an ongoing investigation or not even come at all. The others who are involved in it say, we're not going to testify because we're under investigation. We can't do this. Uh, I'm much more cynical about this. I think it was a Friday afternoon uh, news dump to get away from Congress. I agree with you on that, uh, Congressman. I, I think it's exactly what the ploy is here. They won't have to be able to testify. And I also agree with, with pretty much everything you just said. But very quickly, one minute left. What mm -hmm. impact overall, switching to the politics of it, does this have on the presidential election for 2024? Uh, nothing. If, it, it, it only have an impact, I think, if they, he actually does go back and decide that he wants to be a prosecutor again. And, and decide to look through these cases, go back through this stuff and actually come forward and then actually expand it beyond just what we know Hunter Biden was. So if it is that, yes. If not, I think this is a very poor, you know, triage job because they're having a bad week in the press because there's just no way getting around. They're being treated differently. All right. Fun former Georgia Congressman Doug Collins, thank you once again for joining us. Thanks. Always good to be with you all. Take care. Have a great day.